Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of Indie Book Review where today I am not doing a review, I am going over the books I read in 2020 and all my stats and stuff like that. Now, full disclosure, I'm probably going to get like another two or another one or two finished by the end of the year, but I'm going with this. So, my books of 2020. I have read 55 books, which is not a small number. It's actually pretty decent. Which means that I apparently have read 16,535 pages. I don't know how the hell they calculate that. I guess it depends all on uh, which version of the book you choose. Full disclosure, some of those were audible. So, yeah. But still, it counts, I guess. So, my shortest book that I read was Postscript by Barbara Avon. And the longest book I read was The Stand by Stephen King. This is a fairly long book. This is a not a very long book. This one was actually pretty good. This one was just okay. Moving on. The average book length was 300 pages, which is fairly average for a book, I think. The most popular that I read was Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I actually read on Audible, and this one was so much fun. It was so funny. I loved it. And the least popular was Welcome to Rocky Tank Town by Ali Hamdown. Like, there's not even a, a cover for this. But that doesn't really matter. The book was kind of not that great. It had a lot of potential. It could have been so much better than what it was. But just due to author inexperience, I think, it just missed a lot of the marks. My average rating was 4.2, which I think is actually a little lower than what I would have thought because I read a lot of fantastic books this year. Just absolutely amazing. I gave so many 10 out of 10s this year that I actually am really blown away. This was a bit of a crap year. So I'm really happy to have been able to read so many just fantastic novels. Uh, the highest rated on Goodreads is the 1099th by me. Yes, I read my own books. I enjoy my books. I think I'm a fairly decent author. At the very least, I'm entertaining to myself. So hopefully other people will read it too. The first review of my year, which is not this. This was my second to last review of the year, actually. My first review was the second book of this series. And... This is not the review. This is the review for this book, not the first review that I did this year. Goodreads seems to have malfunctioned a little. Probably because the first review that I did was the second book to this trilogy, and the second to last was the final book of this trilogy. So, yeah. And now we get into my books of 2020. So, yeah, the 1099th, I read that one, loved it, because it's mine. I guess I'm a little biased toward that. Break the Dark by Cheryl Lawson. This one was absolutely fantastic. 10 out of 10. Same as And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Never Split the Difference was a non-fiction book, which will not be getting a review. I don't review non-fiction just for the sake that I'm not an expert in that field. How the hell am I supposed to know if what they're saying is even right? Except to, for to take them at their word. First Blood by David Morrell was fantastic. Same, was, same with Flowers for Algernon, who centered Roger Rabbit. The Return of the Dragon Lord by Melanie Ifield. And the portrait for the portrait by Evelyn Chartrell was absolutely just great. Because Internet, understanding the new rules of language by Gretchen McCulloch is so good. So interesting, actually, just going into how language evolves over time. This I Know by Terry O'Reilly. This is very much a marketing book. I didn't get much out of it because it's more marketing in terms of personal businesses and less in terms of marketing like personal products but still got a lot out of it not gonna lie still got a lot out of it the asylum for wayward girl by wayward victorian girls by emily autumn this book sucks and it sucks hard it is just not good storm at dawn by cheryl lawson this book was absolutely fantastic in the first 10 of the 10 out of 10 of the year it was also the first book of the year so yeah, 2020, in terms of books, did get off to a really good start. Me by Elton John was just fascinating as hell, because I really didn't know as much about Elton John as I thought I did. 
and the movie does not do him justice. Despite him enjoying the movie, it just doesn't do him justice. The Churn is a novella based around The Expanse. It's kind of a pre uh, prologue, I guess, or a prelude. Antiquities Gate by R.F. Hertio. I'm bad with names. I don't know how many times I've said this year. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this name right. But Antiquities Gate, book book one, Three Days Till Dawn, is actually pretty pretty decent. It's I don't know if I'll continue with the series, but that'll be a then sort of thing. Not a right now thing. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which we already covered. Razor Voice by Jamie Vendera. He is a vocal coach. He's known as the person who's able to break glass with his voice. He was on Mythbusters for it. Actually really cool. He's got a lot of really great great pointers for singers. Adam's Witness by J.C. Paulson was absolutely fantastic. And the first romance book I read of the year, and it, what I w- would hardly consider this romance, considering it focuses primarily on the murder mystery. The Angel Runs the World. This, was, this one's one of mine. As I said, I read my own books. There and Never Ever Back Again, A Diary of a Dark Lord by Jeff Mock. This book was fantastic. It was a 10 out of 10 and can't uh, recommend it more. Dreamland by Nick Clausen was just great. Uh, Borrowed Loyalty by Sarath Baffy Bowden was so good. It was so much fun. And I I actually got to do an arc, do an arc slash beta read for the third book. The third and final book of the trilogy. And... I can't wait to do that review. Pistol Daisy by Natalia Lee is easily my most watched review. And the book was really good. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait to continue on with with that like with that series as as she puts it out. The Mars One Incident by Kelly Curtis. This one was good. Pattern Recognition by William Gibson. Not entirely sure why I don't like this book as much as I don't. It will get a full review, so I will actually get into it. It's one that I read earlier this year, and the review is recorded. I just haven't haven't released it yet. It's sort of a... Uh, it's just to give more time if I need it for other indie books. Elysia. This was one of the only two that I DNF'd this year, and this one was just a mess. It needed so much more work to it. I th- I think what it could have been decent, but it just didn't get have the work put into it. And after about a quarter of the way through the book, not only was I completely lost because every scene was just bam, 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 bam. It was just not written very well. It needed so many more rounds of edits. It needed a complete and total... Uh, it, it, need a, it needed some rewrites, it needed just a lot of work. And, I, at, but yeah, after about a quarter of the way through, I had to DNF this one. The Maltese Falcon, this one's a classic, it was so good, and I can't recommend this one more for anyone who enjoys mystery books. What Are Friends For? This is the other romance book that I read, and it was alright, I actually didn't mind it so much. The Van Helsing Resurgence by Avalon Chartra. This book was actually really good, and I was really excited to read the next book in the Van Helsing uh, trilogy or series, and I look forward to reading the next one this year. Edge of the Breach by Halo Scott. This one was really dark, and I fucking loved it. It's not perfect, but I absolutely loved it. The Last Letter by W.B. Welch and Tori Hunter is absolutely fantastic. I loved it up until right about the ending, and then it kind of lost me a little bit, and that's more... Not so much on the story, but more on how it was written. The Lie by Heather Dawn Gray was good. It wasn't anything spectacular. It didn't blow me away or anything like that. But it didn't bore me either. It was just good. Windfall by Barbara Avon. I genuinely genuinely enjoy Barbara Avon books and will be reading more of her in the future. Raymond Chandler, The Big Sleep. This one is just amazing. It's so good. The Secret of the Second Zeus by Anders Kingley. This one, I, I just couldn't get into it. This one was really hard for me to get into. It's not a bad book. I just couldn't get into it. Bear Serum by Kyle Fleischhiker. Another one. I'm going, uh, names. This one I actually read twice. 
the first time because, well, that, that's what I was given. But I had to read it a second time because the file that I was given the first time was corrupted. And I couldn't follow it at all. I had no idea what was going on. So the author sent me a different sent me a different file and I read it and it was actually pretty decent. I actually really enjoyed it. The Bat by Leslie W.P. Garland. This book was not for me. Full disclosure, if you're giving me a book that is considered a coming of age story, uh, guaranteed I'm not going to be as into it as you want me to. I'm just not a coming of age sort of person. I don't even particular, particularly enjoy coming of age movies because I think they're just really cliche, they're kind of formulaic, and nobody knows how to do them right. It's just not for me. The Tech by Mark Ravine. This is the other one that I DNF'd. But it's not because it was bad, but it was because it it was... There was too much. It needed a lot of its content cut, or just reworked in a way. If it was maybe, I don't know, a quarter of the way thinner and just a little bit more streamlined in its scenes, this book really would have been so good. But it just was a little too much for what it's supposed to be. Because after a while, I'm just going, okay, get on with it, just get on with it. And it wasn't bad, but it just really wasn't as good as it needed to be. Postscript by Barbara Avon, like I said before, it was, it was good, it was fun. Banging the Monkey. This book, I actually I actually knew the author. Well, I don't know the author, but I'm a, I became aware of the author through Firewater, which is a band that I genuinely enjoy. I've been a fan of them for well over 10 years. And, yeah, Banging the Monkey, I would, as soon as I found out he wrote a book, I purchased it and read it. And this one, that one was a 10 out of 10. It was just so good. Son of a Trickster. This one was the... Got the nomination for the Giller Prize, and was the runner-up in Canada Reads, and it fucking sucks. It is so bad. Like, it is just not good at all. There's no point to half this book. Well, hell, even three-quarters of the book. And even it being marketed as a... Uh, as sort of like a realistic fantasy book, the magic is so sparse up until the end that I it doesn't even... Like, I wouldn't even consider it fantasy. Chains of Nurture. This one surprised me. I almost put it down a few times because some of the scenes are really intense. And when they're not intense, they're super creepy. But I kind of, but I continued forward with it, and honestly, it surprised me. It was actually really good, and it got a 10 out of 10 from me. But this is not a book for everyone. This is not a book for those of the faint of heart, or for those who can't handle stuff that's not particularly dark, and those who are not willing to be challenged by a, by certain ideas. It doesn't go out of its way to condone said ideas, but they're there. Ale's Agent Alchemy by Gabe Stafford. This one was just fun. I liked it. Swan Song by Robert McCammon. This is my favorite book of all time. It has been since I was 15. I reread it this year, and yeah, it still has that title. Clive Barker, The Hellbound Heart. This one was okay at best. As I said in the review, if there wasn't a movie about this, like a big multi-franchise movie of of this book, it would have been forgotten a long time ago. Left in Good Spirits by Anne Playton. This one was really good. I liked it. The Stand by Stephen King. This one was just okay. I really... Like, it's Stephen King. It's whatever. The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. I would have loved this book if any if any of the scenes actually led anywhere, if anything actually meant anything in this book. If any of the story arcs or character development actually went anywhere, I probably would have really loved this book. But nothing went anywhere, except for like one character. And even then, it was kind of a bit of a cop-out. <sighs> Demon Rising by Karma Rose. This book is criminally underrated. 
This book needs more readers. This book needs more people reviewing this. This book needs so much more. Because this book is not only fantastic to read, but it is so charming. It is just wonderful. And I can't recommend this book enough. Read this book, people. You'll love it. All right, and then we got on to my last four books of the year. Welcome to Rocky Tank Town by Ali Hamdown. Like I said before, this book had a lot of potential, but it just didn't get there. And some of it was probably just due to inexperience with the, la with the author. I hope the author continues to write more books, but this one's just not good. Human Resource Management in Canada. I'm taking uh, HR in school. This is just what I want to do with my world, with, with my life. It's a good, it's a good career choice, and because I read the book, it counts here in Goodreads and as something that I read this year. Piercing the Celestial Ocean by Kip Kolesh or Kolesk. This book is another one that surprised me. I wasn't into this one uh, when I first started reading it, but once the book started going, it really started going, and I I enjoyed it. It was really good. I could hardly put it down. Foucault's Pendulum by Umberto Eco. This is the last book I read this year, and yeah, this book is probably everything that you've ever heard of it. It is dense. It is hard to read. It is tough to get through. It is the Da Vinci Code for smart people, and I fucking loved it. I actually really, really enjoyed this one. This one is going to get a full review. Same as all the other ones that uh, that I have yet to f do reviews on, at least in terms of fiction. I'm not going to do the nonfiction and the uh, um, one autobiography. Like That's just not good. And then my last review of the year, which is for Piercing the Celestial Ocean. This book was a lot of fun with the interesting world, fascinating cultures, and believable characters. I would totally recommend this book. Yeah, that notion still hasn't changed. So yeah, that was what I did this year. I just read books. And frankly, I loved that I read the books that I did. Even the ones that were, that were not good, that didn't get good... Like that, that didn't get good reviews and good scores. I'm glad that I read them, because at least it was something for a. At least it was a something to read. But B, it gave me something different to read. It gave me something that, you know, isn't this fantastic. That aren't these fantastic books. As much as I love reading fantastic books, sometimes I need just the just that stuff that's not as great. I'm happy to have read them. But anyway, that's all I got for you, folks. So, I hope you had at least a passable 2020, and I hope 2021 goes a hell of a lot better for everybody else. Mine was, like, my 2020 wasn't awful. I did continue to work, and I read a lot of fantastic novels. More 10 out of 10s than I actually thought I would be giving out. But in any case, have a good one, guys.